Hello everyone, welcome to the series of VMware vSphere. In this session, we are going to deploy some prerequisites that is the mandatory requirement for deploying the vCenter server appliance in your environment. In the previous session, we have discussed about the vCenter server appliance and in the concluding part, I have informed you that the DNS server is the requirement to deploy vCenter server appliance. Let's have a brief overview why DNS server is a requirement and then we will proceed with the configuration and installation of the DNS server. And before we conclude, what we are going to do is uh, we will be uh, assigning a domain name. We will assume some domain name and we will map it with the specific IP address so that in the next session, straight away we can start with the installation of the vCenter server appliance. We will be deploying a vCenter server appliance as it is deployed in the production environment. So let's have a brief overview of the requirement why the DNS server is required uh, for deploying vCenter server appliance. When you deploy the vCenter server appliance, similar to any network server, you can assign a fixed IP address and a fully qualified domain name that is resolvable by a DNS server so that the client can reliably access the service. When you deploy the vCenter server appliance with a static IP address, you ensure that in case of system restart, the IP address of the appliance remains same. Before you deploy the vCenter server appliance with a static IP address, you must verify that this IP address has a valid internal domain name system, it is DNS registration. When you deploy the vCenter server appliance, the installation of the web server component that supports the vSphere client fails if the installer cannot look up the fully qualified domain name for the appliance from its IP address. Reverse lookup is implemented using PTR records. So when we will be doing an installation of the DNS server, at that time we will be looking into the PTR records as well. We will set up the PTR records as well. So if you plan to use a fully qualified domain name for the appliance system name, you must verify that the FQDN, that is fully qualified domain name, is resolvable by a DNS server by adding forward and reverse DNS A record. So guys, moving on, what we are going to do now is very first, we will be installing our DNS server and add on to the DNS server, we will install the Active Directory as well because uh, in our syllabus, we are going to cover the Active Directory integration as well. Although that Active Directory integration, you, are, you will be performing on hands-on lab. But as I told you that I need to show you each and everything. See, in your hands-on lab, you will be having a ESXi machine ready-made available. So that's the reason I have shown you the installation of the ESXi on my home lab. And then what I did is I have given you a simulator where you have done the ESXi installation. The second thing is the vCenter server appliance is also readily available in your hands-on lab. But I will show you the vCenter server appliance installation as well. And the prerequisite for the vCenter server appliance is uh, that you require a DNS. So I will be showing you a DNS also and what all configuration is required. That also I will show you uh, in this session. Apart from that, we will be having an Active Directory. In your hands-on lab, your Active Directory is also readily available. But I will be showing you the Active Directory configuration also. And of course, we will be doing an integration in your hands-on lab where you will be performing the lab. So till now, guys, we haven't come to the original topic of the VMware. We are just building up the foundation, okay? So there will be many things, uh, the basic requirement which we need to do. So that we are doing now. The core topics are going to start very soon from the next session itself, where we will be deploying a vCenter server appliance and moving ahead. So now, Let's move and start the configuration and installation of the DNS server along with the Active Directory. So guys, over here, if you remember, ESXi1 was the one uh, server which we have done the installation, right? And then what I did, uh, and the IP address which I have given is 192.168.1.101. Then ESXi2 I have created, okay, in the similar pattern. And one Windows server I have installed and I have given the name of the Windows server as AD server. Apart from that, if you want to see the configuration, uh, the networking, I will show you that also before we move further. 
So all this what I did is I have connected to VMNet1. Let me show you. This is VMNet1. I have added a, a virtual network laptop with VMNet1. Okay. And over here, I have given the subnet IP 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And we don't need DSCP. So I have unchecked this box of DSCP. This is all, all the configuration which I have done. On ESXi1, I have the IP address 192.168.1.101. And on ESXi2, I have configured the IP address that I will configure right away. So the IP address, uh, you know how to configure. The IP address which I have configured on ESXi2 is 192.168.1.102. And on this uh, Windows server, which I have given the name AD server, I have configured the IP address. I will show you the IP address for this as well. It is 192.168.1.50. See, usually the gateway will be 192.168.1.1. .1. Uh, we are doing a lab, so I haven't put the gateway. But uh, usually the gateway you have to put in your production environment. We'll put it later. For now, it is not required, so I haven't put. But the gateway will be 192.168.1.1. .1, okay. Uh, now, let's move to the configuration of the DNS server. What I am going to do is, I will just uh, click on the start button. Uh, let me just uh, maximize the screen for the better view. Okay, so over here, what I am going to do is, I will just go to server manager. Over here in the server manager, I am going to add the roles and features. Click on add roles and features. Uh, after clicking add roles and features, click next next see uh, i am going to install the dns server for uh, it is a prerequisite for vcenter server appliance if you want to go in depth about active directory configuration dns server then i have made a separate tutorial where i have explained each and everything each and every option in detail i will put the link that uh, for that as well so that if someone is not familiar with this concepts they can have a depth understanding on this as well okay over here click next Just check this box, Active Directory Domain Service and click on Add Features. Then over here, you have to check this box, DNS Server as well, click on Add Features and click Next. 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 And click on Install button. The installation has started it will take some time so guys over here our installation is completed we will close this and you will see uh, over here one notification just click over here and over here just click this mode this server to a domain controller click over here it is giving you the options over here add a domain controller to an existing domain Add a new domain to an existing forest. We neither have any domain or a forest. We will say add a new forest. Root domain name is asking you over here. I will give the name noorlabs.com, the root domain name, and click next. Over here, select the functional level of the new forest and root domain. So we will say 2016. Again, I will repeat what are these options if you want to learn these things in detail. I have made a separate tutorial on Active Directory DNS server. You can just go over there and refer that. Over here, put the directory service restore mode password. Uh, you can use the password which you are use which you will be using for the Active Directory account itself. So I will put my password over here. click on next button over here click next uh, the NetBIOS domain name over here you have to give so it will be similar to the domain name which you have used we have used noolabs.com so over here we will give noolabs it has taken automatically noolabs and click next
here it is giving you the database folder details log files system volume folder what all things will be kept where click next next click on install button it will take some time for the installation so it is successfully completed now close it we have successfully installed the active directory oh, uh, and the dns server also so guys now after the installation our machine is booting and once it is booted then we will proceed with the for the configuration where we are going to add the entries of our ESXi host and the vCenter server appliances basically we will be adding uh, FKDNs over here which we will be using during the time of installation of vCenter server appliance so now we will log into our server and over here the password which you will be using is the active directory password which we have configured during the time of configuration not the local administrator it is a domain administrator okay you can see over here node labs is a domain which we have created so we will be using the password which we have recently configured during the time of installation of our active directory and dns server and log into the server so guys uh, basically once our configuration is completed we will be adding the dns IP address over here and it will be it is a usual a usual practice right uh, to add the DNS IP addresses in the DNS column we will just change it to 192 168 1.50 and let's give the gateway also it is not required although in our lab in production it is required but we will give it next thing what we are going to do is see active directory and all we will look when we will be doing uh, labs on active directory integration okay but for now uh, our requirement is we need to configure the dns entries right so over here you can find option dns click over here on the DNS and in DNS manager just expand this or you can see over here as well you have forward lookup zone and when you talk about reverse lookup zone it is not there so we'll do one thing let's create a reverse lookup zone as well new zone next 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 network id will be 192.168.1 next uh, over here allow okay. next and finish now what you did you have created a reverse lookup zone as well uh, over here let's start adding the entries entries for your esxi host and vcenter server if you go to this nodelabs.com over here you will see entry 192.168.1.50 which is pointed to the server similarly we are going to add the entries and what i did i have just assumed the domain names as well that our esxi1 will have let's say esxi1.nodelabs.com it will be pointed to 192.168.1.101 similarly we have for esxi2 and for vcenter server appliance i said vcsa.nodelabs.com and IP address which we will be giving in our next session when we will build up our vCenter server will be 192.168.1.100 okay so this entries we are going to add one by one click over here and just click over here new host A this is what I have said you when uh, I was giving you a brief idea about the DNS server require why the dns uh, server is needed for deploying vcenter server and i told you over there that you need to add a forward and reverse dns a records right so this is 
where we are going to do over here the configuration we are going to add the records over here use this parent domain name if blank so over here you will say esxi1 okay uh, the name will be esxi1 and it has taken the fkdnc esxi1.nulab.com right the ip address towards which we are going to point is 192.168.1.101 okay and just check this box as well create associated pointer ptr record it will from here itself you can create a ptr record no need to go to other pane and do it from there and click on add host host record esxi1.nulab.com was successfully created click on ok button similarly we will create it for esxi2 as well and the IP address will be 192.168.1.102 click on add host uh, one more thing we have already checked this boxes create associated pointer PTR record click ok and finally for vCentral server appliance which will be vcsa.nulabs.com IP address we will be configuring 192.168.1.100 this box is checked on add host okay done now let's verify this whatever we have done we will try to verify this so guys what we are going to do is we will be trying to ping using the fqdn the fully qualified domain name but before that let's verify if our ptr records are also added going to reverse lookup zone over here instead of adding uh, again coming over here and adding i told you that instead of adding to the different pane we can do it by just checking the box ptr record so once you check that box P create a ptr record this entries for the reverse lookup zones also created okay so now we will check uh, this particular entries one by one what we will do is we will just open the command prompt let me open the command prompt over here okay and I will try to ping using the FQDN. Uh, the first domain is esxi1.nurlabs.com and I'm getting a reply from 192.168.1.101. This is the IP which we have pointed for this domain. Similarly, let me check for the second ESXi host and I'm getting a reply from the IP which I have pointed for this. And let me try for vcsa also although you will not get a reply but it should resolve the ip address vcsa.nurlabs.com and you can see that the ip address is getting resolved to 192.168.1.100 of course it will not ping because this server doesn't exist till now so guys that's all about the installation and configuration of the dns server although we have configured active directory also this we are going to see when we will be uh, discussing on the session where we will be integrating our active directory with the vcenter server appliance but for now this is uh, what you need to do a configuration and installation in your production environment before you go ahead with the vcenter server appliance let me quickly recall what all things we have done we have started with the brief discussion why the D uh, dns server is required to install the vcenter server then we have done the configuration and installation of the uh, Active Directory and the DNS server all together and then moving on we have opened the DNS manager where we have created a reverse a zone we have added a reverse zone over here. after adding the reverse lookup zone uh, one by one we have added uh, entries we have added a host and mapped it to the IP addresses on the same pane over there we have checked the box create a PTR record so no need to just again come to the reverse lookup zone and add the reverse entries we have done on the single pane where we have added a host map into ip addresses and finally we have verified this using by pinging the esxi1 uh, using uh fqdn then esxi2.nulabs.com which is a fqdn for esxi2 and also we have verified the vcenter server appliance fqdn which we have set as vcsa.nulabs.com and pointed the ip 192.168.1.100 since the server was not in existence we were not able to ping but yes the domain is resolved the ip address which we have pointed it is going over there so in the next session quickly we will be starting with the vcenter server appliance and once that is done then we will be coming to our core topics in the vmware vsphere session that's all guys if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel yet please subscribe it now and do share with your friends thanks for watching and see you in the next session